lesson is going to be on the red and white popcorn bucket. When I first designed this popcorn bucket, I was going absolutely insane because I didn't like the way that the bottom stayed open. So I fiddled with it for a good week or two, trying to find a way to get the bottom to close. And I figured it out. I'm so happy and I'm so proud of myself. So today's version is going to be slightly different from this as we are going to be doing a closed bottom on our bucket. So with the closed bottom, we're going to have an extra step or two, but it is going to make it look one entire piece. Instead of some of the other buckets and different things out there, they the bottom is a separate piece. I've made mine and constructed mine so that it's going to be all in one piece. And if this popcorn bucket is too big for you, I will be doing another video in a small. What I'm doing today is the medium size. Then I have our large size bucket. And then for those people who love that jumbo popcorn, here we have a bucket full of a jumbo popcorn. So this is going to be the jumbo, the large, the medium, and the small. But today's tutorial is going to be on the medium. So let's begin the tutorial with our loom set in a straight position. You want straight pegs and you want the center peg taking out. I'm going to be filming this tutorial today with the arrows if you have arrows on your loom, the arrows are going to be pointing towards your right. You want your arrows to point towards your right, this way. Dun, 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 that way. Wish I had one of those little flashy light things to make the arrow go that way. And the cups, the upper portion of the each peg is facing your left. So, let's begin with needing about 70 red rubber bands and 50 or so white. I'm not 100% exactly on my count for that, um, but let's give that a try. It's pretty close to that number. The first thing I want you guys to do, first thing we're going to be doing is working on this top upper edge, which is going to be um, all solid red, and it's going to form a chain around the top of the bucket. You might be able to see it better here on the red, but it forms a chain around the top of the bucket and I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks along the way so let's begin with a single rubber band and you're going to pick a spot somewhere in here we're going to be using four a number five is going to come down this way and then we're going to go back four and another number five here so we're actually using ten um, sections of the peg take one band and dangle it over the edge of a center peg. I'm just working in the center just so it shows up better on camera. I want you to take another single band and lay it across the top portion. We're going to do this four times. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Remember they are single bands. Band number five is going to come straight down. Band number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, and your number 10 band is that one that we left dangling right there. So to get your number 10 band on this hook or peg, you wanna just grab it with your hook and pull it over onto that peg. So, our next step is going to be to take and loop this around. And that's what's going to form the link look at the top of our bucket. How we're going to do that is we're going to reach into our upper peg where we started. You're going to grab that band that's on the bottom and you're gently going to pull it back over. This row is going to be a little awkward for some of you because we're not actually looming in the correct way that we need to loom, or most people typically loom. So I may turn my, turn my loom a little bit, but you want to reach into that peg, grabbing that bottom band, 
Be sure to hold down on the ones that you're pulling from. And we're going to loop forward. Or backwards if some of you have your loom at a different angle. Reach in, pushing back those bands, and we're going to link to where the band originally came from. Reach in, grab that bottom band, and move forward to where the band came from. Reach in beyond those two bands that are there now. Grab and come forward. Now this one's going to be a little tricky. And I'm just going to stretch it out some so that I can see the band way down here at the bottom. You're going to reach in, grab that band, and we're going to carry it to where it came from. So you're making a square link chain pretty much. Now these are going to be a little bit easier and I am going to turn my loom so that it's easier for me just to loom it straight forward. Reach in, grab that band, and come forward. Reach in, grab that band, and come forward. Reach in, grab this band, and come forward. And then you'll see this crazy kind of triangle look here. You want to reach in, and you want to loop that band to the forward peg. And that is my starting peg. That's what I like to call my starting peg there. Not that it really matters once we get into this, but that's just what I like to call my starting peg. I'm going to turn my loom again and make sure that your arrows are pointing towards your right and just push these guys down. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a single band again. And this is a little trick that I learned when I was making these guys because I was getting so confused as to how many rows I had done. I want you to take a single band and I want you to place it on your loom over here. This means that we're working on one row. We've got one band there and we're working on the first row. So we're not actually looping that into anything. That's just there to help me count and figure out how many rows I've done. Take a single band, working from our starting point over, and we're going to alternate red, white, red, white, red, coming down, white, red, white, red and white. So here we have just laid 10 across. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, and white. Now um, this technique, I don't really know what it's called. Um, I've seen some other people do it as far as their videos, but I don't know if it truly has a name. Uh, I would call it a knitting stitch, I guess. But we're going to pick up our loom and I'm going to turn it so that I work at my starting point just because that's where I like to work from. I'm going to take my hook and you're going to reach in here in that starting peg on the outside of it. And you're going to grab those two bands and you're going to fold them over that first peg. Being careful not to slide off the bands that are ahead of it. The next peg, you want to reach in and fold over the two bands that are on the bottom. The third peg that we're working on, reach in and fold over those bands. Reach in and fold over those bands. I'm on the corner peg, reach in and fold over. I'm going to work on the other side where I reach in underneath and fold over. Some of you are pretty familiar with this technique. Bottom two, fold over. I am more of a straight chain linker kind of person, but just because this seems tedious to me, but they turn out really cute. 
and I'm reaching in on the last one and pulling over. So now I'm back to not having any bands on my starting peg. I'm going to set my loom down again, push those down, push those down, and now we're going to work on our second row. We need to make five of these rows. There's my first row. And now I know I'm working on my second row because I've got two bands on my little counter peg there. And we're going to do the same thing. Red, white, red, white, red, white, red, white, red, and we're going to finish up with a white. And you guessed it, I need to pick my loom up again, and I'm turning around to my starting peg, grabbing my hook, and we're going to do a similar thing. You're going to grab those bottom two from underneath, bottom two bands, which in this case now one's red and one's white, and we're going to grab the bottom two and we're going to fold it over. Peg number two, grab the bottom two bands and fold them over. Bottom two, fold over, bottom two, fold over, down here the bottom two, and fold over, whoops, and you'll see that that band slipped off a little bit. You wanna make sure that it doesn't fall out into there. You always wanna make sure that you've got two bands on your peg after you're done your fold over. If not, it will fall apart. Only speaking from experience there. We're going to reach in, bottom two, reach in, the bottom two, reach in, the bottom two, Reach in, and the bottom two. Reach in, the bottom two. And there we've completed our second row. Now for those of you guys that are experienced in making this type of thing, I know DIY Mommy does a lot of this type of, of linking or stitching. Um, you're probably going to be faster than me, but we need five, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, my camera's pretty zoomed in today. We need five rows total of the red and white mixture. So if you want to fast forward through and get that done, I'll catch up with you at the end because the end is, is different because you remember, I figured out a way to close my bucket. Sorry, a little excited about that. Okay, we're going to start over again on our starter peg. This is row number three with red. White, red, white, red, and I'm going to go faster just because this is pretty repetitious at this point in time. White, but for those of you that want to do it in real time with me, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button, catch up, whoop, got fans going everywhere this morning. Wait, okay. That's row number three, and how I know that, because I got my three little counter bands over here. And now we're going to bottom two, fold over. Bottom two, fold over. Bottom two, fold over. If you're not used to this stitch, hit the pause button. Get them folded over. And I always, that one always wants to slip off on me for some reason. So I'm just going to push that back down. There we go. Bottom two, fold over. Bottom two, fold over, two and over, two and over, two and over. And row number three, looped. Okay, now we're going to start row number four. There we go. And here we go. Red. easier if you push them down. Red, white, red, white. Yes, 
I'm whispering because I'm getting on my own nerves. <laughs> okay, and here we go. Time again to reach in. Sometimes I find this one hard to get. Reach in and loop over. Reach in and loop over. Bottom two. Loop over. Bottom two. And loop over. Bottom two and loop over. Bottom two, loop over. Two and over. Two and over. Two and over. Two and over. And push down. Push down. And let's start our one, two, three, four. This is our last row. See why I have those bands there? Because I need to count all the time because I lose track. This is number five in red and white and red and white in red and white and red and white and red and white. I don't think it really matters what color we do them in. I'm really not 100% sure. As I said, I, I don't quite understand how the whole linking of this project happens as well as I do as, you know, being able to figure out some of the other complex stuff that I do. Um, so, number five, we're going to reach in, loop over. This is the last time for this. Yay. <laughs> Kind of boring in my opinion, but turns out really cute. Just the repetition. I like to work on things that don't have a whole lot of repetition. And sorry for being so quiet today. But as I said, it's kind of repetitious. Not a whole lot to talk about. Unless you want to talk about coffee, soda, tea. <laughs> Okay, now we have got our sides of the bucket done. And now we're going to do the bottom of the bucket, which I don't want to show you this one anymore because it, it doesn't look the same. So for the bottom of the bucket, I want you to take a single red band and I want you to wrap it around your hook twice. Here we go. Single red band wrapped around our hook twice. We want two loops there. Take two more single red bands and you're going to slide a double twisted band onto those two. So here we have got two red bands with the double twist band on it. And what you want to do is to match up their ends and stretch them out. So you want almost like a circle in the center and here's one end and here's the other end and what we're going to do with this circle is to take and place it on our loom from our starting point to this corner over here you're going to place those links right there from that one band and those two links way over there and it looks super stretched out but there is a circle your circle is right here and what we're going to be doing next is working at the circle in the center. I want you to take another single band, place your hook in the center of that circle. And I want you to take and grab a band. And then I want you to pull it up through that center and reclaim it back on your hook. And then we're going to take this and we're going to stretch it out to the opposite corner. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to take our hook and place it in the center of that opening. And we're going to grab our band and reclaim it back on our hook. Oops, lost that one. Center opening, reclaim it back on our hook. And we're going to stretch that out to the other corner. 
you know, we need to do this process for every peg. It doesn't really matter which peg you start with, but place your hook through the center, grab it, and then loop to a peg. Your hook through the center, grab it, and loop onto an open peg. Your hook through the center, grab it, reclaim, and loop to a peg. Now we have these three down here that are still open, if you're following exactly along with me. Hook through the center. And you can turn your loom however you feel to make it comfortable for you. Loop through the center, or hook through the center, reclaim, and place it on that peg. Hook through the center, pull your band up, reclaim, and loop on the peg. Hook through the center, reclaim, and loop onto your peg. So now all ten of our pegs have kind of almost like a starburst, sort of a starburst technique in the center. Um, but that's all hooked up and linked up together. All right, now we are ready to begin to loop our product shut, our little bucket shut. I want you to take your loom and I want you to turn it so that it's facing towards your body. Arrows will be pointing towards your body. And what we're going to do is we're going to reach into our starter peg. I'm going to reach in and I'm going to get that red band on the bottom. We'll see two red, a white, and another red. We're going to reach in through this peg, through the center of the peg, we're going to hook that red band, we're going to pull it out, wiggle it out, and then it's going to move over to our left. We're going to reach into this left peg, grab that red band that's on the bottom, we're getting the bottom band, and we're pulling and wiggling that out. We're going to bring it down one peg. We're now closing off that circle in the opposite direction from when we started going to reach into this peg, grab that bottom white band, wiggle it out, and loom it to the next peg. We're actually looming down or looping down. Reach in, grab that red band, and coming down, reaching in, it's a white band on the bottom, and come down, and we're going to reach in, grab our red band on the bottom, and loop across. Reach into this bottom right peg, grab that white band, and come forward. Reach in, grab that red band on the bottom. Sorry about that, guys. Grab that red band on the bottom, wiggle it out and come forward, reach in, grab the bottom red band. Nope, I grabbed two on that one. You don't want to grab two bands. We just looped forward a red band, so I want to reach in and I want to grab the white band. Pushing back everything. I've got my white band. I'm going to loop forward. I'm going to reach in, grab my red band, and loop forward. Okay, now we just need to tie off our creation. And to tie off our creation, we need to get this white band that was on our starter peg. We need to reach in there, wiggle that white band out, and place it up on your hook at a further location. For this peg, we want to reach in Grab the white band. We want to wiggle it out also. And then we are going to slip knot that off. Pulling each of those bands. And we're just going to slip knot it off. And 
with any luck, when I go to take this off the loom, we're going to have something that resembles a popcorn bucket. And you guys know that have followed my videos, I use the back of my hook all the time just because it puts less tension on the, the items. Our counter bands are just going to stay on our loom. You'll take those off when you get a chance. Um, they're just there just to help me count. And our bucket is kind of squished looking. So you want to just place your finger in there and you kind of want to roll the bottom out some and stretch the bands out just a little bit. But here we have got a cute little popcorn bucket. This guy, you just want to reach in through the center, the center of the top. We just want to hide that up in there. So just grab, grab that little guy, pull it up in there, and just stretch and play with it a little bit. Get it to the shape and to your liking. But here is our cute little popcorn bucket with our closed off bottom. I'm so excited about the closed off bottom and it looks so much neater than my original. So just take your little popcorn kernels that you've made, your loomless popcorn kernels. If you want a quick and easy way to get them to go in the bucket, just grab an open loop of however many kernels you have And if you just slip knot those together, that'll keep them together and a little bit um, less unruly. Just fill your bucket up with however much popcorn you want. If you like the look of the popcorn spilling out and over as I have there, if you're displaying it like in a dollhouse, you want to make a couple extra pieces of corn so that you can just sort of Toss them around and scatter them. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this popcorn bucket tutorial. And you'll follow along with some other things.